Hi friends, how's it going? Today I wanted to talk about wrap-up videos, the famous, the infamous wrap-up videos, I don't know. My friend Katie, nope, my friend Kieran from Katie Books posted a video the other day talking about why he does not like wrap-up videos and why he doesn't do wrap-up videos on his channel. And I was watching that video and it was kind of a weird feeling because I didn't actually disagree with most of what he said there's one point that i disagree with that i will talk about at the end of the video but i didn't really disagree with what he was saying but i also feel like there's a little bit more to it from my perspective it's also just an opinion like it's not that serious make the videos you want to make and watch the videos that you want to watch it's it doesn't really matter but i wanted to talk about wrap up specifically two points in terms of wrap up videos and whether they serve a purpose or not and also the amount of books that people are reading and talking about in their wrap up videos. Let's first start with the quantity of books because that is something that I feel is a conversation that constantly is going around the internet book talk booktube about how many books people are reading and there are 100% I guarantee people out there who are not truthful about the amount of books that they're reading and I mean that kind of happens in every single like industry or every single area of the planet right people are going to you know kind of misrepresent the truth because they're trying to get at something and there is something to be said right for these like clickbait titles that are like i read 30 books this month or whatever but i also don't think that everyone is lying necessarily about reading those books because i know for myself personally i tend to read more than the average person and also like a point that i wanted to also tackle is that like Kieran said something along the lines of like this distorts the image of like how many books a normal person should be reading and that's like one thing I disagree with because I don't think most people who are making book talk videos or booktube videos are necessarily like the normal reader right like I like for instance I'm a normal technology user I have a phone I have a laptop I have a router I have headphones right and so like I, I consume like a normal amount of technology but I would never start a YouTube channel that's based around technology because like, I just don't care. I don't have, I don't care. I don't have enough knowledge about these things, right? It's people who are super passionate about something for the most part that will start a channel or some sort of, you know, blog or TikTok or whatever about a specific niche topic. Those people are kind of outside the norm, in my opinion. Also with quantity over quality, I don't think that is just a specific thing to do with books and reading. I think that is a reflection of our society as a whole for the most part, right? People always are wanting more and bigger and better and kind of having a regular amount or a normal amount of something is not seen as good because you're not kind of elevating your status in society, right? Whether that is having a bigger or better car or having multiple cars or having a bigger house with more bedrooms. It's always, I shouldn't say always, there are some people who do not subscribe to this, but there is a thing of like bigger slash more is better. That is naturally, I think, going to feed into a book community where people want to see like, wow, my God, this person read 40 books this month. That is wild, right? And there are probably people that are not being fully truthful with the fact that they read 40 books this month but I do think there are people who actually do read 40 books in a month right I mean it depends I think a lot number one on the types of books that you are reading for like for example I have a couple books here I don't want to compare like across genres because that's a whole other conversation but there are I mean there are genres that are I think easier to read and you're not at least for myself, I'm not reading certain genres to get some sort of like in-depth analysis of them, right? Like if I'm reading a fun romance book, I'm not sitting there taking notes. I'm just there to have a good time. I'm there to escape into a world and to have a good time and just like let my imagination run wild, whatever it is. And so the kind of time and the effort that it takes to read that book can be very different than, for example, <laughs> a book I'm currently reading, right? So we have Bleak House by Charles Dickens, but we have another classic to compare, Virginia Woolf's A Room of One's Own. So these are both classics and they take a completely different amount of time to read, right? This is like a hundred pages, this is over a thousand pages. You can read a lot more of these than you can of these, right? And neither of these is better than the other. They're just completely different books that have a completely different amount of pages that are going to take a different amount of effort to consume. Another thing in terms of quantity and people that read a high amount of books, I know for myself when I have higher reading months it's because I was escaping. Usually the more books that I'm reading the worse my month was. This is not a hundred percent the case but I think it was Bookish Realm she did a video about a year ago where she was talking about mental health going down and book reading going up because you're looking for an escape and for me who like my main kind of hobby outside of of, well no I was gonna say my main hobby outside of work work is not a hobby but kind of my main hobby in my free time is reading and 
if I don't have other things that I'm planning on doing, if I, you know, I don't have like social events or whatever, if the weather is bad outside, I don't want to be spending a lot of time outside and I'm also in a bad place where I want to be escaping, I'm going to be reading more. Also, maybe I'm putting too much faith into myself and into other people and not enough faith into like how badly people can sort of spin the truth. But as someone who reads, I feel like it's fairly obvious to notice when someone has actually read a book. Because if you're following a channel and they do a wrap-up video or they do a standalone review or a vlog or whatever, and they're talking about a book that you have read before, if you have read that book, and they have read that book, I feel like you're able to tell that they have read that book. <laughs> but if you've read that book and they haven't read that book, but they're trying to talk as if they have read that book, you're kind of able to pick it up. Not 100% of the time, but like there is this feeling where you're like, did you really read that book? Is that what you got out of it? Because that doesn't make any sense, right? That being said, I think that there is quantity over quality, but I don't think that is a book talk or a booktube thing. I think that is just a general overall thing and it's up to you as either a creator or a consumer of this content to decide if that is something that you care about, if that is something that you subscribe to or not. The second point I want to tackle and unpack a little bit is just the idea of wrap-up videos. Kieran essentially says in his video, which I don't disagree with, that wrap-up videos are kind of useless. There's a, a quote that I wrote down somewhere he said that people just spout off vague banalities when they talk about the books that they read. Because let's say I read 10 books in a month and my video is 20 minutes long. I'm talking, you know, for two minutes about every single book. You're not going to get much of an in-depth analysis about that book, which is 100% true. There's there's very few wrap-up videos where I've watched where I'm like, wow, I really understand the core, you know, substance of this story. It is usually just a brief synopsis for people that haven't read it and then a bit of your thoughts, your feelings, whatever it is, right? We've, we've all seen a wrap-up. We know what happens in them. But that's not a problem to me. Like for me, why, like if I was thinking about like, why do I watch wrap up videos? I, there's a couple of reasons why I watch wrap up videos. First reason that I watch wrap up videos is to see kind of new books that I would want to add to my TBR or books that I would like to read. Because there's certain creators that I follow that I know we like very, very similar books. And so if they are now saying that they read a book, and they have liked that book, <laughs> then I am more likely to want to also read that book. I don't need to have this like in-depth analysis for me to want to read a book. For me personally, like standalone videos, I only watch those videos after I have read a book. If I, if a creator posts a standalone book review and I haven't read that book, I'm probably not going to watch the review. And I only search out the reviews once I've read a book and I kind of want to dive a little bit deeper into it. So for me, number one wrap up videos are because I'm trying to find new books to add into like the books that I want to be reading. I'm someone who does not really follow like bookish prizes or like bestseller lists or anything like that. So I don't really know what is coming out in terms of like current day things. I also don't read a lot of new releases. And so for me, wrap up videos, it's like, okay, I like this creator. I know that we have similar reading tastes. Oh, they really like this book. And it sounds like it's a topic that I would enjoy. I'm going to put this onto my TBR. I also watch wrap up videos because I just like certain creators. There are certain creators that I follow that, for example, read mostly fantasy books and I read very little fantasy books. And yet I still watch their videos, their wrap ups, because I just like them and their personality. And for me, it's partially just entertainment, right? Like not everything has to be that serious. And I think if we are all looking for sort of like these in-depth analyses, <laughs> analysis, mm, girl, I do read, I promise. Uh, not everything has to be that deep. And that's not to say that you shouldn't want these things, right? That we should be looking at books in a critical way and we should be trying to unpack what the author is trying to say, what we are trying to get out of it. But sometimes it's just like entertainment and like having, you know, a wrap up video on in the background of someone who I find entertaining to listen to. To me, that's a vibe. So for me, wrap up videos serve a completely different purpose in actually trying to understand what a book is about and what a person or a creator is really feeling about that book. I just want to be entertained. I want to add some new books to my TBR. I find them almost an elevated version of a haul video because in a haul video, the creator really has nothing to add to the story, right? They, they don't know if they've liked the book or not. They kind of have a vague idea of what it is. I think that is like very much the sort of like, they're just reading the back of the book, right? Because that's all that they know. They have not read the book at all. And I still watch haul videos. I think it can be once again, like good kind of background noise, but I'm not getting much substance from a haul video for the most part. But for me, a wrap up video is kind of like that elevated haul, right? Where they're showing me a bunch of books that they have read, but I get to hear if they have liked them or disliked them. And then based on what I know of that creator, and if, you know, we've previously liked a lot of books or we've previously not liked a lot of books, 
then I can make a decision on whether I want to add certain books to sort of my future to be read pile. That's essentially it. The one thing I wanted to add to this was at the beginning of his video, Kieran said that people always tell him to make wrap up videos because that is how you can make more money on YouTube. And I actually, this like triggered a memory in me because I remember Kieran, you posted a video like a, a year ago, I would say, talking about monetization on booktube and specifically like how much money you make. Now I'm not monetized on booktube, but I remember watching that video and one of the things that you had mentioned, <laughs> speaking directly to you now, one of the things that you had mentioned was that you feel like you have a higher earnings because you post a lot of single review videos because single review videos or single book review videos tend to have like a longer lasting lifetime, right? You put it out once, but it continues to be watched over and over again. Whereas something like a wrap up, for example, if I post my, you know, April wrap up, it's going to get a bunch of views at the beginning and then it's slowly going to taper off. And I remember hearing that and I was curious and like, I'm, I'm not monetized, but I can see my analytics in the background. And I remember looking at that and still when I like look at my analytics, it's almost always my single book review videos that have the highest amount of views. Like if you look at, you know, your highest views in the last month, it's my very newest videos. And then all of the single book review videos that I've done over the years. So I actually think for making money and monetization, probably single book review videos are where it's at if you want to be making more money off of YouTube. I don't think wrap ups are necessarily where the money is, but maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm not monetized. I'd be curious actually for people that do a lot of wrap up videos and people who do a lot of single book review videos, uh, like how their monetization falls because I don't do that many single book review videos but yet those are always the ones that are kind of like the highest watch rate for me. That is it, that is the end of my rambles. I hope that that made some sort of sense. I tried to film this a couple times yesterday and it did not work out. So hopefully today I'm able to edit this and it actually makes some coherent sense. But leading off, I have actually two questions. If you've made it this far, I have two questions to ask you. Number one, if you are someone who watches wrap up videos, why do you watch wrap up videos? And the second question is whether you are a content creator or a content consumer, if you feel like the quantity over quality type of thing has affected your reading in any way. All right, that's it. That's all I've got to say. I have no beef with wrap up videos. I have no beef with whatever people post. If people are saying that they're reading 50 books in a month and they are or they're not, I mean, you do you boo. It's generally pretty clear when someone has definitely not read the books that they are talking about. Anyways, that is it. Stay tuned for my April wrap up next week.